So one of the biggest misconceptions about dry suits are is they keep you warm in colder environments. And the truth of the matter is that's not how a dry suit works. Now there is an exception to that, of course, with a neoprene dry suit, but in general, a shell-based dry suit, all it does is keep you dry. It doesn't necessarily keep you warm. By keeping you dry, what it does is it traps a layer of air around your body and whatever that air temperature is, you're gonna have to contend with that. So let's say you're in 40 degree water, the air temperature inside the suit's gonna be 40 degrees as well. So my question to you is, do you think you could withstand 40 degree air temperature and say a short sleeve shirt like I've got on today. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on part five of our series of dry suit diving. And in this video, we're gonna be focusing on undergarments, dry suit undergarments. That's the undergarments that we wear to stay warm while wearing a dry suit. Because unless you're in a neoprene dry suit, you can still get very hyperthermic while wearing a dry suit in colder environments. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at several different dry suit undergarments that I personally wear, and we're gonna talk about the pros and cons to them as well. There's three questions that you've actually gotta ask yourself before you purchase an undergarment for your dry suit. Question number one is temperature. What is gonna be the temperature of the water that you're gonna be diving in? Question number two, of course, is gonna be mobility and flexibility. How much movement are you actually going to need underwater? And the third question that we're gonna to try to answer for you today is budget. Can you actually afford the dry suits that, or the undergarments that come with your dry suits? Or are there gonna be better options, say, at your local department store that you may wanna consider before you put a healthy price tag on, say, a dry suit undergarment? So to try to answer those three questions, what I'm gonna do is show you the four basic dry suit undergarments that I wear and kind of explain what are the environments that I wear those undergarments in. And hopefully it'll help you answer those three basic questions of what's the temperature of the water you're gonna be diving in, how much mobility do you need, and of course, can you budget whatever the cost of that undergarment is? So the first suit that we're gonna look at is just a basic polar fleece suit. This is from OS Systems. I typically will wear this under a neoprene dry suit where I really don't wear the undergarment for warmth. I just use it as a protective layer to keep that neoprene from sticking to my skin. It's gonna give me plenty of flexibility and it's gonna keep any chafing down that the neoprene itself may um, cause to my skin. Now it's not really gonna be much uh, thermal protection say in a shell based suit, so I'm gonna step it up a notch. The next one that we're going to look at is the X Basic from Scuba Force. This is still a thin layer of fleece material, but it's actually got two different mat uh, materials built in. It's a fleece internal layer and then kind of like a nylon outer layer. Now the great thing about this suit is it's going to work great in tempered environments. Say if I'm wearing a shell based suit, whether it's bi lamb, tri lamb, or even a vulcanized rubber suit, but it's still going to give me plenty of flexibility. Now another th great thing about this undergarment is I can use it as a base layer if I need to bulk up in in extremely colder environments. Well, speaking of colder environments, let's see what I wear in extremely cold water. Typically, I'm gonna wear the X-Pure system from Scuba Force. Now, there's many different manufacturers out there. These are just the ones that I use. But what I like about this particular suit is it's a one-piece suit. It's just basically a jumpsuit that zips up on the front. It's gonna work great at the surface to keep me warm. I can put my hands in the pockets. I can even put hand warmers, say, in the chest pocket or whatnot, just because it's gonna keep me warm because of its design. But yet, I'm not really sacrificing any mobility with this suit because it's still going to be flexible and designed to be used with a dry suit. Now once again I can double it up if I need a base layer I can add a layer underneath it but it's going to be a great option as well for colder environments. Now the last suit that we're going to look at is the ultra skin suit from Mares. Now this suit actually comes in two different styles. You can get a one-piece jumpsuit or you can get the two-piece model. I prefer the two-piece model. Now what I really like this suit for is when I'm diving in say a neoprene dry suit and I need that extra layer or protection or extra warmth there. Now the great thing about this, this is an alternative to your standard wetsuit as well. So in the unlikelihood event your suit was to flood, which sometimes neoprene suits can because of the neck seals. If you lose a little bit of weight, you can't really change out that neck seal like you can with a latex or say a silicone seal, and you may get a little leakage around your neck. Well, of course that leads straight into your core area. And when that happens by using the ultra skin as an undergarment, it's actually gonna protect me the same way a standard wetsuit would because we all know how warm we stay actually in wetsuits. So these are the four suits that I use. Well, let's see how they compare in comparison to the three questions. One, let's talk about temperature. 
Well, we understand not one undergarment is going to work for everything. I can use a thin undergarment for warm water diving. I can use a thicker undergarment for cold water, or if it's extremely cold, I can actually combine several of these, use a base layer and a primary undergarment and stay very warm. Question number two, let's talk about flexibility and mobility. The thing that a lot of people will ask is, well, how do you know which one's going to be the best for you? Well, simply put them on. By putting them on and moving around, you will see how much flexibility you actually have. Well, how much flexibility do you might need? Well, if you're a back mount diver, you may not need that much. Really, the only movement you're going to have is if you frog kick or flutter kick. So you're not going to have that much movement with your legs. And as far as your arms are concerned, most of the time we dive with our arms out in front of us, the only movement you really need, of course, is pulling your gauges up to seeing how much air you got. Now, of course, doning and doffing your BCs and stuff like that, that's a given, but underwater, you don't need that much movement. Unless, of course, you're a side mount diver like me. For me personally, as a side mount diver, I'm constantly bringing my tanks forward. I can make penetrations with it, so I need a suit that's gonna be very flexible and give me the mobility I need, yet still have the thermal capacity that I need to stay warm as well. Now, the third question that we had to answer is, of course, budget. These suits are not cheap. They are not inexpensive. They are actually actually very expensive and there are some options that you can go with to help save or to have a better budget towards these suits. Now a lot of people will say well Brian what about fleece material from your local department store? Yes by all means I can purchase fleece socks, I can purchase wool socks, any of that can come from my local department store but what you got to remember about the scuba industry is these suits, these undergarments are specifically designed and engineered to work with whatever dry suit you get and I would strongly encourage you whatever manufacturer of dry suit you go with that's also the suit that you want to go with as far as your undergarment because they are designed and engineered to work with that suit they're not going to add too much bulk or too much um, buoyancy so where you have to overweight yourself just to go down they're going to give you the right amount of flexibility and the right amount of warmth one of the things i would caution you on is if you wear too many undergarments you have too much bulk not only is it going to increase your positive buoyancy and you're going to have to overweight you're also not going to have the airflow go through the suit the way you need it to for certain circulation. So when you look at undergarments, make sure that of course, it's going to be the right undergarment for the temperature of the water you're going to be in. Make sure you have the right mobility and the right flexibility. And of course, make sure you can budget as well. There's plenty of options out there. You don't have to have the most expensive and you don't have to buy the dirt cheapest. Buy the one that works for you. Now, a great way to test undergarments before you ever take them underwater is to wear them on the surface. You see, if I'm in 40 degree water, that means the air that I put in my suit is going to be 40 degree. I need an undergarment that's going to withstand 40 degree air temperatures. So the easiest way to do this is in the winter time when it's 40 degrees outside put your undergarments on and walk outside and see if you can withstand the temperature if you can withstand it for 30 minutes to an hour then you can by all means withstand it 30 minutes to an hour underwater because 40 degree air is simply 40 degree air it doesn't matter if it's here at the surface or if it's inside your suit so that's a final tip that i'll give you that's a great way to test your undergarments to see if they're going to be great for you underwater you can test the mobility and test their thermal capacity as well by simply walking outside while wearing them guys i really hope you enjoyed this video of our series of dry suit diving we Got two more videos to go so please stick with us i think you will find them very interesting and educational as well if you like this video if you got any suggestions give me a comment down below give me a big thumbs up definitely share it i'm going to go ahead and sign off for today take care god bless and i'll see you in the next video